first race of the day. This is going to be an OG Spyro Year of the Dragon. An all bosses race between Absent, Ghostly, Waffle Wizard, and Wojo. I'm going to hand it over to Jeremy Thompson and Rui. They're going to be doing some commentary for this run, and I hope everyone has a great run and enjoys it. Okay, so, um, is everyone ready to go then? Yeah. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, okay. I'm good. Alright, uh, I'll count you guys in then, alright? So, start in three, two, one, go. Alright, I uh, just need to get a stream up on our end. Okay, so, um, welcome everyone. Um, this is a all bosses race uh, between Absent, Ghostly, Waffle, and Wojo. Um, and the whole entire like, point of an all boss race sort of thing um, it goes through like all the different bosses of the game. Um, it's very much like any percent, however, there's like extra parts added in. Um, specifically like bosses like Blue Toe, Twin Dragons. We'll like see them throughout the run, but um, for the most part it's just going to be going through with the bosses as quick as possible. So already uh, they've all went into Sunny Villa and at the very start they're going to try and get um, a proxy and what a proxy is um, it's basically when you make Spyro get a bunch of like momentum from like interacting with like another object sort of thing so in this level in particular uh, they're trying to get a dead body proxy off of the Rhinoc at the very start um, I don't think a lot of them got it. I think Absent got it, but um, basically it allows you to skip straight away to the end. Um, and like that's going to be the goal for like most of these levels. So I think the route might start changing at this point. I think some of them might start going into. Uh, Cloud Spies first? I think they're all going into uh, Seashell, actually. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Maybe not. Well, yeah. Wojo looks like he's going into Seashell as well. Okay. Um, the so stats are, are different, though. Yeah, yeah. Seashell is the first level that actually has a boss in it. Um, it has um, Bluto, which is uh, sort of like a shark boss. Um, and there's like a couple ways you can sort of do the boss, but like for the most part you want to sort of get enough rockets as quick as possible. Um, and then like basically just try and take out Bluto. Um, I think some of them are going to go for like a particular setup where they do damage abuses um, so that they can keep on shooting Bluto. Um, Whereas others might just try and survive out the fight. In terms of uh, getting into Seashell as well, there are two things that we should mention. One of them is Swim and Air, which all of them used. Uh, Absent used a variation of Swim and Air that uh, is a lot faster, um, but also kind of risky to do if you get it second try, called Waterfall Swim. The others, um, at least the ones that I watched, I assume all, all three of them used uh, Whirlwind Bypass Swim and Air, which is um, a little more vanilla. Um, it uses an out-of-bounds with the Superfly power-up. Basically, with Swim and Air, um, the water in the game is programmed to be a swim state trigger and uh, a container for that swim state trigger. And so if you can get the trigger but not be contained or somehow escape the container, 
then uh, you're able to maintain the swim state wherever you want, um, only ended by certain things happening, like touching another swim plane and dying, things like that. Um, and Sea Shed normally would require you to have 14 eggs in a conversation with the NPC outside of the level to enter it. Um, but all levels that are locked um, are stored directly beneath where they would be if they were unlocked, and they're still fully active portals, and so you can touch them, go in, and fortunately not have any problems when you come out. Hansen's going to start entering uh, Molten Crater, and uh, as he was going in, he did a little bit of a wall glide. Um, it's just one of the, sort of the tricks to help get out of bounds. Sometimes when uh, gliding against the wall, uh, Spyro will stay up in the air a little bit longer, uh, which allows Spyro to get out of bounds much more easier. In Molten, there's a different type of proxy that's used compared to Sunny Villa, where it was a dead body proxy, as we explained. Um, animation proxies, like the one that they go for off the board at the beginning of this level, are very similar, except instead of being embedded within Hitbox and getting your momentum from that, you get the momentum from the animation pushing you um, in one frame, and you preserve the momentum in the same way, pretty much as you do a dead body proxy. But it's on the outside of a, a hitbox instead of the inside. Waffle just got all proxy right there. One thing to note if you want to highlight uh, <clears throat> whirlwind bypass is that Ghostly is using it to enter uh, all three levels that require the entrance um, out of bounds. So he's using it for Molten Crater as well. So he's used it twice so far, but you'll see it after Cloud Spires too. So since it's being used so frequently in this run, um, I'd suggest, I'll point it out on the top right, Ghostly, uh, after he exits Cloud Spires, so he expires, he'll go for that. And essentially what needs to be done with Superfly uh, is you flap and then you fluidly go into a charge and that charge has a little momentum from your flap and you can uh, get quite a large jump. It almost, it almost looks like a double jump. It's similar in, uh, I guess, process to a double jump, um, but it's it's a completely separate thing. Yeah, it's sort um, of like charging out of it. Yeah, but it, it's required because the Superfly has a... Uh, a trigger from which if you go through it while you're super flying, you immediately use your super fly, uh, regardless of how much time you have left on it. And so you need to charge through that trigger, um, so that it in, in preferably with an uh, advantageous height so you can get out of bounds in the first place. I think most of them are in Cloud Spires right now, while entering it. Oh no, actually Waffle's ahead. Uh, he started going into uh, Sheila. Um, and uh, like ending on Sheila for this homeworld is sort of on purpose. Um, we can't actually end on um, Sunny Villa because if we was to do that, um, if we haven't like spoken to Bianca, um, that would sort of interrupt the teleportation and we wouldn't actually be able to get onto um the aircraft a balloon that's it hmm. i think hunter can also interrupt uh cloud spiders right uh, i think you're right but i think it only happens if you've initiated text with him uh before, like on the first platform, so he's on the second platform instead. I think normally you'd be fine, or if you wait on the text for the teleport, Thanks, he'll dude. interrupt it in some way. Yeah. But you, you can end on Cloud Spires uh, without losing time. Well, uh, other than the routing time. There could just be extenuating circumstances. So in Sheila, um, it's one of the first escort missions, I guess the first escort mission. Um, you'll see one in Lost Fleet that's breakable, but all the critter levels, um, Sheila, Bentley, Sergeant Bird, all of those you actually have to go through a bunch of specific checkpoints to guide the NPCs throughout the level. Um, 
in Sheila it just happens to be a bunch of pickaxe rhinox, a moose or whatever it is. I think it's a moose, maybe. Maybe a buffalo. Um, and then you have to hit all the mushroom huts and then the NPCs will follow you. And uh, that's that. The uh, positioning of the rhinox is uh, random. Their actions, if you're not close to them, are a little bit random. And uh, there's one also uh, at the end, one of their spawns is random. So you can lose maybe up to three to four seconds in randomness in, in, the, in that level. But uh, overall, it's uh, pretty negligible. Let's hit the waffle's actually in uh, Buzz now as well. So that's our second boss. Um, usually this would be like the first boss that you'd go through in any percent. Um, Listen carefully, you and for this boss, there's sort of like two things going on as Waffle's fighting it. Um, the first thing he's doing is he's standing on the edge of the arena, which makes it so that Buzz doesn't charge at Spyro, because the game thinks Buzz is going to charge off into the lava, and like it stops Buzz from doing that, so he just sort of stops in front of Spyro. Uh, the second thing Waffle was doing there was he was turning his camera away uh, to make it so that Buzz didn't do his fire attacks. Um, in the game, if you're not actually looking at an enemy, they won't attack you. Um, or at least most of the time. I feel like sometimes they do. So one separation from the uh, any percent level order routing is that after these bosses, the sparks levels unlock and uh, the sparks bosses are required for this route. And so you'll see uh, all of them exit buzz, hopefully, um, but all of them should exit buzz and they'll be going to the sparks world where there's an out of bounds that's pretty interesting related to uh, pressing R1, L1, uh, locking your camera a little bit. And then you just climb up the wall. Um, it's pretty easy in a lot of levels. Unfortunately, uh, you can skip the tutorial in Crawdad Farm, the first Sparks level. But there's not a lot uh, after that that you can do other than do things intendedly quickly. Um, it would be nice if there were an out of bounds right at the, the beginning of this main level. But not so far. If you want to look for something, go for it. I don't know if you noticed as well, but. Um... Waffle went for an out of bounds in the second room. You can actually do it in the first room, but uh, interesting that he went for that one. I didn't even know you could get out of bounds from the second room. Yeah, that was the original one that was found. And then after it was discovered that there was a slightly, I, mean, I won't say an easier way, but I guess a more omnipresent way to get out of bounds in Sparks levels. Um, it's kind of just there in a lot of places. Um, it's a little more, I don't know, whenever I do it, I kind of just mash that one. The one in the second room is a lot easier. Um, it's what I trough found when he was tossing. So anyway, uh, the main thing with the Sparks worlds is that uh, for bosses, there are certain power-ups that, I mean, there's one power-up in specific um, that just destroys every single boss in like 10 seconds or less. And so they'll want to have that power up going in. Um, in this level, it's really easy to do that. Some levels you just don't want to miss it. Don't want to collect another power up on accident. Because if you collect one power up, it supplants the one that you currently have if you have one. Um, so the one they want is one that gives them 300 shots, extremely rapid fire, and they just go right up to the face of the boss, stay there, and uh, hold X, I think. Is it X? Uh, square. Square. There you go. Square is always to go fast, remember that. Um, might no. No, it is X, isn't it? I don't Sorry, know. I'm done. <laughs> it's probably X. So one of them buttons. Yeah, one of the face buttons you press and you hold and then the boss is dead. Yeah. Um, sort of like spoilers for the end though, um, for the very last level, um, there is a green butterfly, but because of where it is, it's sort of awkward and slow to go for it in this category. So at the very end, they're going to be going into the boss with no power-ups, or at least I think they are. They might do something. I don't know. For Spider-Town? Um, no, uh, Bugbot. 
Bugbot. Oh yeah, yeah, I think Bugbot's no power up. I think Spider Town probably. All four of them will do no power up. There's a way in Spider Town to get the power up and not really lose time from it. Um, I mean, you get you gain time because you beat the boss quicker. But it's risky and difficult. Um, when I was doing 149 Egg last year, Nerf found it, and uh, it's it's a cool thing. It saves like 10 seconds, but it's it's hard, really hard. Mm -hmm. So they're all going into Sergeant Bird now, at least most of them are. Um, except Ghostly. Oh, he's, is he going to... I think he might be using the same level route, but just using the head bash to swim uh, instead of the Ah, uh, right, right. Okay. Well, anyways, um, Sergeant Bird, again, is another escort mission. Um, and it's really the only level where you collect an extra egg in the run, um, just because of how the level's made, you sort of can't avoid it. Um, but they're using the shoulder buttons when moving around here. You'll notice that, like, Sergeant Bird, he's sort of just, like, drifting, and, like, the camera's not moving at all. That's because they're pressing R1 and L1 when doing it, and basically it gives Sergeant Bird strafe speed in, like, all directions doing it. You don't have control of like where the camera is but um like it's really fast movement in level mm -hmm. and in terms of escort missions sergeant bird is uh the most interesting and complex of the three that are going to be done i think it's a really really interesting level uh compared to sheila and bentley but there are a lot of optional checkpoints in sergeant bird that um occasionally if you do them um the hummingbird has different paths she can move through the hummingbird i think her name is gabrielle she's the npc you need to guide and uh those paths um when she checks if a checkpoint has been completed um she'll check and if it's done she'll go through a very optimal path and if it's not done she'll go to wait at the stopping point and start checking then and um these optional checkpoints can force her into that more streamlined path and she'll go a lot faster. I mean, additional to optional checkpoints, there are double checkpoints, um, at least one double checkpoint. It's just uh, really interesting. So there are a lot of enemies that are killed that aren't necessary to complete the level, but end up speeding up the level a little bit because they move Gabrielle a little bit quicker. Um, whereas in Sheila and Bentley, for the most part, all the checkpoints are just mandatory checkpoints that you have to do in order. So Waffle and Absent are on to the third boss now. Yeah, the third one. Um, which is Sleepyhead. Um, for the most part, Sleepyhead is just doing two attacks here. Um, after he throws a bomb, he'll always like do uh, the green attack, which summons a bunch of like crocodiles. Um, but he also has another attack that like a lot of people who run the game probably won't know about. If you like stand very far away from him, he has a fire attack, but you never see it. Speaking of the prototype as well, um, that was released a while ago. Um, that fire attack was actually blue. It's a little bit of interesting trivia. At the end there as well, um, I think Absent just went for a glide straight into the center. Uh, when you do that, you can collect the egg a little bit more faster. Probably saves about two or three seconds, I reckon. Yeah, the caveat to that is if you miss it and do it and land in the water, then you have to exit and redo the fighter at softlocks or something very bad happens. Um, so it's a little bit risky, but if you're comfortable with it, then yeah, just free time save. Well, I just in Sheila right now. Um, <laughs> you know, a blind guy should be a boss. Honestly, yeah. We'll have to reconsider. <laughs> Add it to the category. So at this point in terms of eggs, um, just to give some idea of the magnitude of being able to skip into levels early, um, Spooky Swamp requires 25 eggs, uh, Bamboo Terrace requires 30, and they have... 11, 12, 13, somewhere around there. And uh, throughout the entire run, they only need uh, a few more than that. Like they're just over 20, um, probably close to 25 in this run. Um, 
And in any percent run, you only need 19 to enter the sorceress, where normally you would need 100. And so it's a very, very helpful thing. Um, and it's going to be used in a bunch of levels in this category um, and any percent categories. But in, in, throughout the run, it's one of the most impactful time saves is just not having to collect 80 extra eggs. I'm trying to tell where everyone is at the moment. <laughs> um, so yeah, Waffle um, is just finishing up uh, Bamboo, and I think Werger and Ghostly is going to be entering there short after. Um, and for Bamboo, there's a couple of proxies you can do uh, to do it first. Um, so there's Boulder Proxy, which is um, sort of a squeeze proxy, um, straight after um, helping the pandas sort of thing, uh, they'll move the boulder for you, and like if you make Spyro sort of like go right up against the boulder, he sort of shoots up into the air. Um, sort of really hard to explain, but um, basically the more you try and push Spyro into the boulder, the more likely you're going to get a proxy from it. Um, the other alternative one is there's a bug that you can proxy off. Um, it's really hard to do, uh, but if you do that, you can get on top of the huts and then Sproda um, outside uh, the like side level part that has the boats. I forgot what it's called. Um, but then like go straight to the end, sort of, straight to the end of the level from there. Um, and like that's the most fastest method, but can be really hard to get. Waffle uh, just passed absence. Um, I think Waffle got the squeeze proxy that more recently a setup was developed for. Um, and absent had a little bit of trouble on the bridge, so they're very close right now, within three seconds of each other. Yeah. Um, a lot of times these levels were designed in a way where the architecture. Um, it was meant to have ledges be tantalizing, just very enticing edges where you're like, I think I can make this, I think I can see this, and it's just frustratingly and barely out of reach. Um, however, a lot of these levels, the actual case is that um, just barely are things within reach. And so Waffle's going to go for a jump right now, uh, the icy peak jump, and you just need good jump mechanics and a good hover. You need to use good jump mechanics and a good hover. And uh, you can make it across this ledge and skip a huge section of the level. Um, Absent will probably go for uh, a skipper on the ice wall and a uh, momentary speed conservation that was found during the tossing process for Spyro 3 and E%. Um, hopefully somebody at least gets over to the ice wall. Um, but once you try it once and miss the ice wall skip, um, then you can't go for it again because of some... I mean, some, some reasons. <laughs> Basically, Sparks is the first actor until you die once and then he's not, and then that actually changes the substance of the trick. Well, I've got a pretty high proxy. Yeah. An enchanted there. Um, but Waffle's in Spike now. Um, so, the Spike fight... Um, it's actually kind of interesting in this category um, because of the extra eggs that they're collecting. The game's actually in hard mode now, I think. <laughs> that was on neutral mode, um, but basically, Spike changes quite a bit in difficulty, um, like between easy mode and hard mode. Um, so in any percent, because you're not really collecting many eggs, like he's on easy mode, so you only do one shot at first, and then after each phase it would go up by one. Um, but in like hard mode, he has two shots, and then it goes up by one as well, uh, after each phase. And that extra shot sometimes can be like really hard to adjust to, at least is for me personally. And also his health, uh, he only needs six hits on easy mode. In hard mode, he needs a nine. So this boss is way, way, way harder in hard mode. Yeah, and another difficult part of the adjustment is, in addition to, um, I mean, if you're, if your muscle memory is for any percent, um, I've experienced this quite a lot. You're kind of used to dodging shots as if he's only going to shoot one fewer time. Um, but 
so, so you get punished for that. But then also, there's no uh, health that gets dropped in hard mode in this boss. And so when you're punished, it becomes a lot more dangerous because if you get to green or zero sparks, it's pretty easy to take a couple hits on accident in this fight, even if it's just the flame pillars while you're trying to get a power up. It's also quite hard because you sort of need sparks as well for the sparks level afterwards. So, yeah, I think both Waffle and Absent have taken like quite a lot of damage during the fight, so probably be yeah, a bit harder for them. I was going Waffle to say just Waffle's going to have an issue, but yeah, he solved that problem. Yeah. Um, and that often is the thing to do. Whether you're going to do it in Spike after the egg, or you're going to do it on the Spider in Spider Town. Um, if you're if you're on Green Sparks, this just isn't going to work out usually. Um, and so, you uh, you Death Abuse get your Sparks value back up, and then do the boss. Like I mentioned before, there is a way to get the power up because if you destroy that Spider that uh, Lawful used and all of them, I think we used to uh, get the out of bounds. If you kill that Spider, he drops a power up. But um, usually you already want to be going out of bounds when you kill the spider. And so there's an issue collecting the power-up because the power-up's in bounds. There is a way to do it. Um, it involves getting out of bounds like on top of the spider and then going out of bounds onto the wall after that because you can hop out of bounds um, if you're already a little bit high. Um, but it's, it's difficult and if you miss it, you don't have the out of bounds and the out of bounds is very important in this level. That's another strategy as well, Ghostly Trickster just used, is just to uh, go into midday and get some sparks off the rabbits. They will all need a game over at some point in this run, um, all at the same point actually after Sorceress. And so um, them being on low lives doesn't actually matter too much because they'll have to lose a life anyway. And so death abusing after Spike or in Spider Town um, doesn't matter as long as they don't game over early. It takes quite a long while to actually die in Sorceress as well, so um, like having less lives, or like losing lives before Sorceress would probably be a little bit faster, depending on how you get rid of it. Um, but yeah, I think uh, Wojo sort of had a mindset at one point of if he didn't get a proxy, just death abuse straight afterwards, save up for that. I'm not too sure if he, he's done that, this race. Waffles in Bentley and Absent was almost in Bentley. Um, the really close thing, between them. Uh, yeah, it is. Um, the frustrating thing about going into Bentley is the Honey Speedway portal. Um, because they're very adjacent and uh, the Honey Speedway portal kind of comes first, it's in the way, so you have to specifically dodge an invisible portal to enter another invisible portal. Um, if you're a little bit too low and you're trying to take a more direct approach or um, if you try to just be a little bit quick, cut a corner, you can go into Honey Speedway and um, you don't need to be in Honey Speedway at all ever in this run. And so um, it becomes pretty important to uh, hit your visual cues correctly. That way you don't lose 35, 40 seconds going into honey. Just to answer the chat a little bit as well, uh, Bentley Boxing is a part of this run. And um, it's sort of like convenient of like how uh, the routing works with like any percent and all bosses. Because um, we do like Bentley first straight away. And for boxing, you need to have Bentley unlocked. So it's actually kind of convenient that the levels are like sorted out that way. Um, it makes it so that they can just sort of do the any percent route without worrying too much. They're all in Bentley now. It's really even. So for Bentley boxing, um... The strat usually is to just jab at a specific rhythm and uh, the jabs can deliver extra damage, more damage than they're supposed to by being slightly misinterpreted. Um, and you won't have the same problem with fatigue or with, uh, with clocking out your punches uh, that you would have with, with hooks and 
uppercuts, whatever the other punches are. Um, so jabbing is the thing to do. Um, in addition to that, I don't know if anyone's going to use it, but there's a strat with uh, exiting out the rounds and going back in. And that just, if you're going to time them out to win the fight, that's the thing to do, because then you can just uh, enter the fight, start a round, exit the round, and then the next round starts whenever you enter again. So you skip a minute of the round uh, counting down. Not quite a minute, but close to. I think Waffle will be used in it. I'm fairly sure. For boxing one, um, usually you would like something around 40, um, pretty close to it on the countdown timer. For boxing two, a one round is really good, very impactful in terms of saving time. Um, whenever you complete a round in boxing two, you both get more health. And so, I mean, it, it's less relevant that Bentley gets more health, but his opponent, um, that just means you have to hit him more. So you're losing time, not only to having to start another round, but also to, have to having to hit him more, having to deplete his health more. Show him not to mess with us. Remember to block his eye punches and hit him low when he tries to block. So if Waffle's indeed using that strat um, with exiting out, then you might see uh, Keen yep. Absent converge a little bit more. Because um, if Absent's not using it, he'll probably save time over Waffle, even if he gets a two round. Yeah. Depends how lucky Absent gets, though. Sometimes boxing two can be really unfair. Yeah. You should go back. This time it will be a three round match, and when you win, don't let I hope it works for Waffle because I think he only just learnt it today. Um, and like the thing with um, like stalling out of the match, you still need to make sure that you have more HP than the Yeti, um, so Waffle might be a little bit of a pickle here. Yeah, if he just doesn't get hit now, he should be fine. Man, this is nerve-wracking to watch. Yeah, there's lots of boxing on the screen. Yeah. It's triggering, triggering a lot of anxiety in me. It's not my worst nightmare. Yeah, I'm having 149 egg flashbacks. <laughs> Waffle made it, okay. That's good. Evening Lake is going to be the part where they're going to separate out a lot because not only do we have this, but we also have Twin Dragons straight afterwards. Yeah. Twin, twin Dragons can be massively separating, for sure. So Absin got a two round, meaning he probably made up some time on Waffle. Um, going into Fireworks now, so we'll see Twin Dragons pretty soon. Um, and yeah, with Twin Dragons, just to explain it a little bit before, you follow a purple and an orange dragon Thanks, around man. and try to hit them with fireballs. And there are certain patterns where they just go in a circle for you, and you can hit them over and over and over again. And there are certain patterns where they go into this structure, whether it's a tunnel or um, like a well into an underground tunnel, that um, hides from you and you can't hit them out during that. And uh, they're a little bit faster than you as well, so if they're not going in a circle, you start to lose them if you don't cut corners. So, in general, um, it can be frustrating or it can be very, very easy. Um, but you would like it to, to be very easy. Waffle we'll also tried to go for um, a Firefly proxy uh, at the very start there. Um, the Firefly saves a ton uh, in this run, however, it's extremely hard to get. Um, so, Absent just got it there, so they're probably about equal now. Uh, but yeah, I think there's also another Firefly uh, that you can get. Um, 
sort of like just outside the twin dragons, but um, it was either going to the end of level first and then going for the twin dragons afterwards. Yeah, and the other firefly that you mentioned, I think it's an easy one specific firefly, um, but they can go for oh, the, the second one uh, near the cannon where Greta shoots or opens it and you can shoot yourself. So yeah, preferably the pattern in this is to uh, get the dragons kind of like Absinthe's doing right now, to just go in the circle. Um, it's not extremely manipulable, ambiguously manipulable um, in an RTA setting. But uh, yeah, you'd like them just to go in circles. That's that's the thing that you'd, you'd want them to do. If they go into the tunnel in the background or if they go into the, the little recess underground, then you're going to be losing time. Absence, uh, original dragon, the orange one, seems to have been pretty good so far. At least at the beginning of it. About even. Yeah. Um, you notice as well that they're all they're both focusing on just one dragon. Um, it's a lot more easier because uh, the dragons regenerate health after a while. So if you can just get one out straight away, then it's easier for the other one. Ghostly uh, catching up to them, which is nice to see. And Wojo's just exiting Frozen, I believe. Yep. Yeah. So at the moment, Waffle's about half a dragon behind, um, and Ghostly is about one and a half dragons behind. So if we use that as a rubric. Um, Kind of a weird measuring tool, but very mysterious how many seconds it actually translates to be. Um, mm. Absent just finished. Um, going into Lost Fleet, uh, this is the, the broken escort that I mentioned before, where uh, if you skip to the end and collect a checkpoint and then die, then the escorted NPC will just teleport to the end of the level with you. Um, and so at least Absent, I'm pretty sure, is going for that skip. I don't know if all of them will. It only saves a few seconds, and then afterward, they'll be going for something uh, kind of interesting that I guess we'll mention when it, when it comes to it. Be careful. But first thing to look out for in this level is just to skip into the boat. Yep, so Abson got uh, the enemy boost. Um, and like the lower down on Sparks you are, the better it is, the more you can uh, death abuse. And then straight away, uh, Pete, I believe his name is, um, will just like be on the boat straight away and can get the egg really fast. Would you look? Ed. Oh my gosh. I can't believe I've got his name. You were close. You only had, you had one letter correct out of two. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, what, what Absence going for right now? Looks like he just got it. Um, but you'll see Waffle go for it and... 30 seconds or so. It's called Zombie, and essentially, um, Sparks' value, if you give it a numerical value like the game does, um, we'll call Gold Sparks 3, Blue Sparks 2, Green 1, Zero Sparks 0. When you take damage that should induce death, um, it goes to negative 1 or a wraparound, and uh, you can pause on that frame, and it kind of holds it there, and you have access to the exit level menu when you can hold it there. So if you do choose to exit the level then uh you get stuck in this state that we call zombie state where uh spyro has difficulty transitioning between swimming and not swimming and so since you uh spawn, spawn. out of lost fleet while you're swimming you continue that swim in air and can get into charm bridge in a pretty quick way there's one other way to get into charm bridge early um maybe two other ways but they both suck and they're slow so it's good that zombie exists otherwise any percent would not be fun the ways to uh disengage zombie there are certain cutscenes uh, like the one at the end of charm bridge usually cutscenes that are meant to teleport you instead of teleporting you they will just end your zombie and you'll be fine um also dying so if you die the zombie is done Oh, 
Waffles yeah. just went for an interesting proxy. Um, so I think that's an animation proxy, right? Um, that happens uh, when the enemy's getting big from the wizard powering them up. Um, that's really hard to go for. I'm surprised you got that. It's really impressive. That's it. I've had enough. So, um, another chance for the runners to converge a little bit in Scorch. Um, just because Scorch can be very unfair in that uh, it's not a balanced fight. There are two weapons available to you that Bandit can give you. There's a red rocket where you get 50 of them and a green rocket where you get one of them. The green rocket homes a little bit, the red rockets don't. But they each do the same amount of damage. One red rocket does the same amount as one green rocket. And so if you get a green rocket, um, and continue to get green rockets, you can't get these double hits on Scorch in the same way, and so you end up just bleeding time. Um, usually the, the going rate is per green rocket, you're going to be losing 10 to 15 seconds. Um, depending on the Scorch attack RNG. So you can throw out this energy attack uh, with a bunch of raining energy, you can throw out eggs um, with variable enemies. Um, you want the raining energy attack. That one is very quick for him to to move again. Because when he, whenever he has those circles around him, he's invincible. I don't think this boss is affected much by difficulty, is it? No. I don't think the HP changes or anything, so... No, this doesn't. fight is very much similar to how it would be in any percent. It's actually strange how uh, impactful the difficulty setting is for, for Spike compared to pretty much anything else in the game. Everything else is subtle, they remove a couple enemies, make challenges slightly easier, but in this case, uh, it's just like insane how different uh, Spike is. But yeah, this boss yeah. is pretty much unchanged. Waffle getting the lead again. Yeah, Waffle got first try reds absent. I think he got at least two green rockets, maybe even three. So there's, there's there is another chance. There is another chance for Epson to get ahead there, um, depending on how well they do in Sorceress. I think um, Starfish will be quite straightforward for them, but um, yeah. So in Starfish as well, they're going to want to go out of bounds. Um, but like straight away in the second room, there's the green butterfly power up. So um, the boss here is also extremely really easy. Um, just a case of just keep on using the green power up. It's probably the shortest uh, sparks level. Waffle struggling a little bit there. Absent got it. And now Waffle's got it. Okay. Something to look forward to, uh, pay attention to after the exit as well. We haven't mentioned, but um, after each Sparks level, Zoe gives Sparks a power up through a conversation. And uh, I think all of them, maybe all but one, um, you can skip in some way. This skip's pretty easy, so you just don't want the text box if you don't need the power up, and you really don't need the power ups in this, in this run. So um, after the fight, after the exit, they should just be able to jump away from Zoe without talking to her. Or in this case, pivot away. Because the power-ups, I think uh, it's extended Sparks range after Crawdad, uh, Sparks Finder in uh, Spider Town. Both of those, like, you don't need to find gems, you don't need to collect gems in this run, so those are completely useless. This last one is an extra hit, which I mean, some people could elect to go for, but it's certainly not necessary. And Bugbot, the run's done, so. Make Sorceress a little bit easier, but that's about it. Yeah. Helmet proxy time. Uh, my worst nightmare. Hmm. So, um, um, so, go ahead. <laughs> Did you want to explain it? I don't know. No, you, fair enough. You know, all you. Uh, okay. So, um, helmet proxy is basically the thing that makes any percent possible. Um, it's by getting a squeeze proxy by going like right in between the ground and the helmet and it shoots spire out at 
like a really fast rate. And if you sort of use like D pad or joystick, I suppose, uh, to sort of like guide Spyro up the wall, uh, you can sort of get way out of bounds. And because the because the portal uh, leading to Sorceress is just an area portal that is constantly there, just guided by a door, uh, you can just sort of go over it. And because it bleeds out so much. Uh, you're able to access Sorceress without actually needing any of the eggs. In terms of interesting complexity, I would liken uh, Sorceress fight in terms of boss fights to uh, the Sergeant Bird level um, within the context of escort missions. So with this one, there's so much that you can do and so much that you can predict. Um, absent, this didn't really well, looks like. Um, there, there are uh, patterns of drops and fleeing patterns of the sorcerers where you can predict their movement and you can force different vehicles by doing specific things. So um, I don't think that there's a whole lot of time to explain everything as intricate as it is, um, but just know that there's a lot of manipulation that goes on and a lot of uh, familiarity that plays into the fight and into being good at the fight. The end goal is to get uh, the tank onto the third phase. A lot of like the movement and sh shots that they'll be doing is to try and set that up to make it a lot more faster for them. Absent just finished it, so he's gonna have to leave the level now and re-enter again so that he can death abuse. If cheats were allowed, you could just use a credit cheat, but that is not a thing in this category, so they have to waste their lives instead in game over. Um, Absent is actually in a quite lucky situation he doesn't actually have any lives so he'll be getting the game over quite quick uh they're all, all pretty much at sorceress now virgo's just scan helmet proxy in um it was uh, and I think Absent is going to make his way over to uh, the last Sparks level, which is where the last boss is at. You have to be a little careful doing the out of bounds here. I didn't even realize until I was doing a run of this um, a couple weeks ago, but Waffle had the same experience where uh, you do the skip, and if you try to out of bounds on the wrong wall and don't make it out of bounds, um, usually you would think, oh, okay, I need death abuse now, try to get a reset on that. Um, but death abusing in certain parts of that level after you've made a skip crashes the game. Um, so no. obviously you don't want to do that. So uh, if that happens, the thing to do is actually tax the level and try again rather than to death abuse. But uh, as long as they're familiar with which wall to hop onto, then it's pretty hard to miss that out of bounds. A lot of tragic stuff is happening on Wojo's side right now. Feels so bad for <laughs> Um, absent though is that last boss right now, so he's close to finishing up now. Um, in this boss, you notice he's sort of like hugging the centipede, centipede as much as possible. Um, if the centipede light starts looking towards Spyro, he will shoot out um, sort of like pins, which will harm him. And that's that's absent finished. So I think that was a forty-seven oh eight from him. Which is quite nice. So we're just looking towards uh, the other three runners finishing up now. Uh, I think Waffle has gone the game over. Uh, Ghostly is about to get the game over. And Wojo is uh, fighting Sorceress. So it's been, it's been pretty close so far. Uh, Waffle just getting the out of bounds now, which is good. And this is the only level for Sparks levels where it's just completely unfeasible to uh, get the power up um, and get all the skips necessary. Unfortunately, like in Spider Town, it's difficult, and this one is just slow. Um, like the, the power ups just don't exist in a place where. Um, it would be fast to go get them. So you're kind of forced into uh, 
doing this fight without any, but it's not too bad. Like Ryu was mentioning, you just hug the, the centipede and once he splits, maybe press square a couple times to boost up close to him and then uh, do the same. I'm fairly sure this level only has three butterflies, by the way, and two of them are not inv invincibility ones. So the green one is literally the only one ex that exists and it's in a really awkward place. So that's it's Waffle awesome. finishing. Yeah. Uh, 48.53 that was. <laughs> Waffle just posted, that was the PV. GG on him. Um, I think the timer start is uh, on file select as well, so it's actually a little bit shorter for them, I think. Absent trying to get Saboom jumps. Time is going to be coming up for Ghostly. Next 10 seconds, 15 seconds. Yep, so that would be 49.59. Um, Jim. Wojo has a few extra game overs to do because he was on four lives when he exited Sorceress. Yeah. So do you have any comments on this? You've run this category, right, Ru? A couple of times. I haven't actually posted a run yet. How um, do you feel about it? What are your favorite parts? Uh, not Bentley boxing, that's for sure. That's fair. Um, <laughs> Um, like, the, the bosses in the game are, like, quite interesting, and because you're getting, like, extra eggs, uh, Spike in particular, like, I really like Spike being on hard mode. I think in any percent it's way too easy. You just like Nerf. Nerf has yeah. that same opinion. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> Yeah, I'll have to say my favorite parts are uh, Bentley Boxing, Scorch, and Twin Dragons. I love all of those. The Spartan levels are also actually quite good. Um, everyone just sort of forgets about them. It's kind of sad. Yeah. Um, Twin Dragons is kind of frustrating for me in speedruns. I had this experience when I was doing 149, I guess, well, where uh, my favorite side area when I was younger was Twin Dragons. I thought it was awesome. It was really fun to do. And then speedruns is just not like it, it's fine if it goes well, but it doesn't usually. <laughs> That's just fireworks in general, though. It's my favorite level, and then suddenly it turns into the the absolute worst one in a speedrun. Yeah, no. As soon as you get into speedrunning, fireworks goes from the best to the worst straight away. Uh, Waffle is trying to break his game right now, which is cool. Um. <laughs> And Wojo is about to just finish up. Just a few more hits, and then yeah. Forty-two oh four, I think that was. GG to Wojo. Yeah, nice job, everyone. All right, GG to all the runners. That was actually a super entertaining race. Um, I was just saying, it's so shocking how often we have races on, on Spyrothon, and there's never really any huge blowouts that occur. Um, so that's always a, a fun thing to happen. Um, do any of the runners want to give any thoughts, any shoutouts, before we move on to the next run? Uh, I guess I will. That was just a really fun race. It was very close for me and Epson, I reckon, which was surprising. But yeah, it was pretty fun. Yeah, and that was a PB for you, right, Waffle? Yeah, that was 20 second PB. Hell yeah, GG, cool. dude. GG, Waffle. GG, go. I think, I think <laughs> what made this race a lot more interesting as well is just how, how much Evening Lake affected it all. Because everyone was sort of like 
on par with each other, but like as soon as the evening hit, like it sort of went completely out of whack. Like Absent and Waffle, they were like basically close together throughout the whole time, but just because Absent had like less lives to burn off, I got him ahead. He's also good at 80%. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. So we're going to jump to a quick break, and then up next we have the Spyro Reignited Trilogy New Game Plus Trifecta. That's going to be done by Dr. House, so everyone stick around for that. And thank you again to all the runners, that was a great race and a fun time. GG. GG everybody. It was great to be here. GG.